we must learn to receive revelation. From the Doctrine and Covenants, section 46, verse 11, we have this great truth. For there are many gifts, and to every man is given a gift by the Spirit of God. Yours may be the spirit of prophecy, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and they shall prophesy. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These gifts are with the church today. The gift of wisdom and knowledge, devils are cast out, spirits are discerned. The gift of faith, many mighty miracles give evidence. muscles grow only when we use them. I have come to realize that spiritual gifts behave in the same way. They also need to be exercised to grow. The gift of spiritual discernment is a supernal gift. It allows members of the church to see things not visible and to feel things not tangible. Bishops are entitled to that gift. My bishop right there is in the car. He was on the phone with me today, which he said, I will have you destroyed. Members can discern between schemes that are flashy and fleeting and those refinements that are uplifting and enduring. Uh, I understand now from third party that she is staying at a hotel, that she appears to be uh, okay, the children are okay. And just so I'm clear, she didn't threaten him, the children, or herself in that conversation? N no, everything was subjective. Uh, she did use the word destroy. Uh, she said, I will destroy you. But it was done in a very subjective way that it could have, it didn't necessarily come across as, as a direct threat to him or the children or herself. Okay. Like it could have been destroy his reputation or something less yeah, literal? His spirit, for all we know, you know, his spirit power. his child to whom he has given prophets and promises spiritual gifts and revelations miracles and messages and angels on both sides of the veil he's also given you a church seek and expect miracles the Lord will bless you with miracles if you believe in him Doubting nothing. Do the spiritual work to seek miracles. Prayerfully ask God to help you exercise that kind of faith. Hey everyone, welcome to Outer Darkness. Today we're going to talk about spiritual gifts, also known as gifts of the spirit. And why do they matter in the Daybell case? Because they were used to justify fucking murder. So I thought it was important to talk about them and explain them. They're mentioned in the text messages and different documents. While the text messages and Alex's patriarchal blessing, while they kind of take them to another level, they are inspired by the scriptures, in this case, section 46 of the Doctrine and Covenants, which mentions all these spiritual gifts, which are typically told to you during your patriarchal blessing that you receive when you're usually 16 to 18. Every church member has at least one. And I believe that they were what kind of inspired a lot 
lot of these wacko, like Zulema being able to raise earthquakes and Chad being able to have these visions and all of this. So those are all listed as spiritual gifts. So I want to go over them and I want to explain more about them so you can see the connection that they made and also where they went off um, again on their own little journey. I started looking at the doctrine and I looked at some of what a few people have written about it. So that's really what I'm going to share with you. I did watch or listen to a podcast by Julie Rowe and Eric Smith, and I thought they would be discussing like spiritual gifts in general. But what they ended up talking about was Julie's gift of revelation. And she talks about some bird that landed on her when she was three and she was able to predict that. You know, when you're driving and traffic comes to a stop and you look in your rear view and you think that car behind me is not going to stop. It's going to hit me and it hits you. And that's not fucking visionary. It's common sense. During this podcast, she also talks about Mount St. Helens in Hawaii, like the volcano in Hawaii, how she predicted that they would explode. Yeah, scientists were also saying that. Basically, the entire podcast revolved around her and not necessarily the title of it, which was just Spiritual Gifts. It's Julie Rowe. Anyway, I went through and read through the scriptures, and I'm just going to give you some of the main points and the interpretations that have been given by people like David Ridges, who are considered Mormon. I don't know if he's considered a scholar, but he's written a lot of books on the faith, and he is a doctrinal teacher. He's very well qualified to write about it, and I believe that he's fairly apologetic. So it's definitely not an anti-Mormon source. So I took from him, I read the scriptures, of course, and then I read a few other different things. Gifts of the Spirit are given by the Holy Ghost. It's a gift that we are given by that guy. The major purpose of them is to help us avoid deception. I know. Help members grow and progress in the gospel uh, so that they can also help others grow and progress. Every member of the church is given at least one gift. It is possible to receive more than one gift and very rarely someone may receive all of the gifts. And then the kicker here is that we are encouraged, or Mormons, are encouraged to seek spiritual gifts and to grow their own spiritual gifts. So they are to develop them further and you can also develop gifts that you are not necessarily given or not told to you during your patriarchal blessing, which is where a lot of uh, people find out what their spiritual gift is. So when the text messages, when we see them talking about developing their gifts and Lori talking about how Charles is blocking her gifts, I'm assuming that she's talking about spiritual gifts because also in the text messages, Charles mentions the power of discernment, which is also known as discerning of spirits, and that he believes Lori is using that gift and not in the right way, which I agree with him. Now, the scriptures, the doctrine acknowledges this list of spiritual gifts, but it also says that there are additional spiritual gifts that aren't mentioned. So that couldn't be problematic at all in this case, could it? Most of them are in section 46. So the first is having a testimony, which is knowing that Jesus is the Christ. Then the second gift is to believe that another person has a testimony. The third is called differences of administration, which is basically just the ability to lead others appropriately and to use the resources of the church to do so, to, you know, save souls. Diversity of operations. I know this is sounding quite corporate, but that just means distinguishing between true doctrines and false doctrines, good ideas, bad ideas, wise and foolish counsel. So it's pretty much knowing between good and bad. Uh, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the ability to teach, the faith to be healed. Yeah, that one's kind of problematic because this is great for those that possess it, but not everybody possesses that. This is where that thought comes from that like if you're not healed, then you just didn't, you got to have faith. Sorry, you didn't have enough faith and now you're dead. Actually, usually they're like, oh, well, then it was what the Lord wanted. According to Mormon scriptures, you can have the faith to be healed and then you will be healed. But I don't think that works out for a lot of people. There's also the faith to heal. This is also a gift of the priesthood. But men and women can both possess this gift. It tends to be given to men more often than women. A lot of these gifts actually coincide with gifts of the priesthood. And we talked about the gifts of the priesthood in another video where I talked about why Chad's kids believe their dumbass dad. Another gift is the gift of working miracles. 
David Ridges describes these gifts when he describes them. He talks about like, it's not like a crazy miracle, like calling up earthquakes or storms, Zulema. It's more like small everyday miracles. But I don't think that in the Doctrine and Covenants or these early church teachings in this time where the church was a lot more mystical, supernaturalism was taught more and accepted more in the early days of the church before the 1900s. I don't think that they really viewed miracles as simply as the church would like its members to view miracles now. And that's uh, kind of the problem in this case is that they looked at these deeper, older doctrines, some of which have been disavowed, and added their own twist to them or added on to them so that they were practically unrecognizable, but they were at one point doctrine. And if you read them, you could see how one could make those leaps that they did. There's also the gift of prophecy. And this is something that the president of the church and the Quorum of the Twelve, they are all blessed with this to a greater degree, like for the entire world. So it's pretty cool for them. They stress now that this gift of prophecy or these gifts of revelation, all of those things are really personal and not to be used to, you know, justify fucking murder or to declare yourself a leader or a prophet. You know, they're really talking more small scale. And we'll talk about the history behind that in just a second. Now, the 12th one is discerning of spirits. This is something that Zulema mentions in the text messages as a spiritual gift that she must have been given, which again is telling good from bad, being able to tell good from evil, which didn't fucking work in this case. Almost every church member has this gift. It's kind of like the basic gift. My bishop couldn't be a fraud because I have discerning of spirits and he seems like a nice guy and I can tell good from bad. You know, that kind of bullshit. Leaders are supposed to have a more developed gift of discernment. When they call someone to a position, from what I understand, Chad was at one point a ward clerk, then it would be said that his bishop had that power of discernment and was able to determine before he called Chad as the clerk that he was a decent guy. So that fucking blew up in that guy's face. Elder Stephen Richards has said that this gift really concerns or involves an acute sensitivity to impressions. And by that, I mean spiritual impressions to detect hidden evil. It's also considered to be a gift that missionaries have. It's how they determine if there's a hidden spark underneath when they go out to find new members, as well as two other spiritual gifts, the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues, which now these days they talk about how people are always astonished because missionaries go to the missionary training center and they come out and they're able to speak these foreign languages so easily because they supposedly have this gift or have developed this gift. It doesn't mean it was given to them and their patriarchal blessing, like I said just a couple minutes ago, this is a gift that they developed because you can develop more gifts. Now in Moroni, that part of the Book of Mormon talks about the gift of seeing angels. Remember, like Lori did? They told her what to do. They helped her with family search with computers because she doesn't do computers. I have had some wonderful experiences. I have been ministered to by the angel Moroni. I have seen him. I have had Lots of angelic ministry with people who wake me up four o'clock in the morning and tell me things to do. <laughs> A Mormon fundamentalist named Ogden Kraut on his blog, he mentions the spiritual gifts as well. I actually read the post bookmarked it and then I couldn't find it again. So this is just like the list. I can't expand on it any further because something happened to the bookmark. Ogden Kraut explains there are 12 gifts of the spirit, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, seeing angels or visitation of angels, written revelations, visions, dreams, power to do miracles, healing of blind, deaf, and lame. I don't think that's appropriate to say. Raising the dead, use of seer stones. Remember? Who, who used the seer stone besides Joseph Smith? Wasn't it Chad using one? The gift of prophecy and the gift of seeing the Savior, second comforter, all of that. I'll just start by saying that I am a personal witness of the resurrected Jesus Christ. I am his advocate and I am his friend and he is with me. These were taught in the earlier days of the church. You probably can't find much information on them now. But I went back and I was reading Christopher Blythe, who is considered a Mormon scholar. He's written extensively on this supernaturalism in the early days of the church. He talks about how saints actually, they were all told they had these gifts and they were all very dramatic gifts. There were people that would interpret dreams, 
people that would have visions. This was a very accepted part of the culture. And then in the late 1800s, they started realizing that they just looked like weirdos. But before that, there was a lot of speaking in tongues. And I mean, speaking in tongues. Lots of people didn't know that. I didn't fucking know that. Around the 1900s, you know, early 1900s, 1904, 1905, they started saying like, you know, you need to look to the leaders. And what's problematic about that is that you had this religion built on individual supernaturalism. Now you're saying that only the leaders can have these visions and prophecies and dreams. Basically, what the church said is that the authorities, the leaders of the church still have these gifts, these more charismatic gifts, but the lay members do not. Or if you do, keep it on the DL. Don't really talk about it. They started to not necessarily silence people, but they definitely had discussions with people. And in 1913, Joseph F. Smith, the first presidency, wrote in the improvement era about spiritual gifts or about people taking these visions and dreams and talking about them and prophecies. And the article was called A Warning Voice to the Officers and Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it talked about how all faithful members are entitled to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit for themselves, their families, and for those whom they are appointed and ordained to preside over. So if you are a leader, like a bishop, stake president, and above, whoever you're presiding over, you can have those gifts regarding that person. If you're not in a leadership position, it's for you and your family. Basically, at this time, or probably before this time, the church recognized that these gifts could be not in harmony with gospel. They could be contrary to the gospel, problematic for the church. And so they wanted to stop that from happening because it was a problem. And it's still a problem. But basically, this statement or these statements in the improvement era, these other statements that the prophets began making or the presidencies and quorums began making in the early 1900s, they coincided with the statement. And I talked about it briefly before or like barely mentioned it, but Joseph Smith and Hiram Page, which was the original when Joseph Smith used to say like, oh, everybody can have revelation. And then Hiram Page is like, oh, cool. I'm the leader of the church. Joseph Smith was like, no, you're not. Um, I meant that only I could have revelation for the church. You can have revelation for you. Before these, like Joseph Fielding Smith, it was still interpreted more broadly than it is now. Now it's definitely being taught that these spiritual gifts, the practice of these gifts are limited to you, your family, whoever you preside over. So the church has never denied that these gifts exist. I mean, they are in the Doctrine and Covenants, so they couldn't really do that anyway. General Conference, you still hear them talked about. So they acknowledge that they exist. They haven't necessarily moved away from this, maybe on their website and stuff, and they don't stress it as much as they used to. But they changed from this very communal belief in these gifts where anybody could have visions and dreams, cast out devils, all of these things to uh, actually, guys, it's only the leaders and you can do that for your family, but also don't talk about it because that's weird and that makes us look a little wacky and we don't like that because we need more members and tithing and we got to build some temples and shit. So just like with visions of glory, when we talk about visions of glory, we talk about how Spencer tells his story to John Pontius, but he also states that really he shouldn't be telling this story. He's not telling it to get attention. You know, the thing is with Julie Rowe, if Julie Rowe had never tried to make so much money off of it, had never been so public about it, become an entrepreneur with all of her visions and shit, she would have never been excommunicated. She was excommunicated because her visions or dreams or near-death experience was totally wacky, didn't necessarily align with all of church doctrine or current doctrine was a little too supernatural. And she was going around talking about it, selling books about it, and kind of making herself into a prophet for profit. And so my belief is that that is actually the reason why she was excommunicated. It wasn't necessarily because she had these experiences and not even because she talked about them, because people talk about them. I mean, there's a shit ton of books written about them that are published by the church's publishing companies or publishing companies that regularly publish LDS material. It's not like having a vision or a dream or prophecy is against the religion because again, they are part of your spiritual gifts. And especially for men, they are also part of priesthood gifts. They kind of um, go hand in hand. It's making them public. That's the problematic thing. So really, again, we can see how Chad and Lori and the extreme team 
took this teaching in the Doctrine and Covenants by earlier prophets and even by current prophets and just So there's a leap that they took as far as like where they took those gifts and how they interpreted them, but they were originally based in Mormon doctrine and they were taught that they could have those gifts to a much smaller degree. But if they were looking at old teachings and these supernatural experiences of early saints, and they definitely were, and they wanted those because they wanted to be super important, it's not that hard to believe that they viewed it as this is part of our religion. What I see on message boards and forums is that people will think that there are hidden messages by prophets, that they say things in conference, but they're really kind of given a nod and a wink. If President Nelson mentions revelation and doesn't say personal revelation before it, then they're like, oh yeah, he proves. My beloved brothers and sisters, I plead with you to increase your spiritual capacity to receive revelation. That's really more of the problem. Remember, Alex's spiritual gift was given to him by Chad and his patriarchal blessing, which was pretty much bullshit. But a lot of that blessing was also things you would see in a normal patriarchal blessing. Not all of it, for sure. Not the whole like fourth creation and all of that bullshit. But you know, when he talks about how Alex will have the gift of knowledge and visions and things like that, I don't think that's completely out of the ordinary. Maybe it is now because they've like backtracked on that stuff. But there are websites you can go on where people upload their patriarchal blessings and you can read them or read uh, parts of them. And it's not incredibly different. Chad took from probably normal patriarchal blessings and then added his own like, you're super important, Alex, because we're going to murder you. And he also gave Zulema one. And again, these aren't the only spiritual gifts in Doctrine and Covenants section 4611. It does say that there are many gifts. Church leaders have even said that there are many other gifts which are less conspicuous and less spoken of. And today, like I said, they will try and teach that, you know, the gift of miracles is just like, oh, you didn't get in a car accident on the way home from work. All of these things they have really kind of taken back and minimized, which I understand why they've done that. The way they were originally written, the way they were believed and practiced is far more extravagant, I guess I would say. Definitely a lot more magical thinking or mysticism, supernaturalism in early Mormon history. Part of the frustration that I've had is that it's being completely ignored in this case. People are saying this has nothing to do with the church. It's like, no, these people took what the church was based on and the original selling point of the church, which is that we can all have these prophecies and we can all have these dreams and visions and we are all connected to God on a personal level. And we all have these powers and we're all special because we're the elect. We're supposed to lead people into the second coming and we're in charge of Zion. We're going to build it. That was a lot of the early days of the church when they weren't hidden like they are being hidden now. So sometimes when people come on my channel and they're like, the church never taught this, I believe that they believe that. They were probably never taught that, especially within these last few years. But it was taught at one point, especially in the early days of the church, and they have been used by people, and not just Chad and Lori. So I see why the church is trying to back off from them, but the church also needs to acknowledge them. The number one that I think should be fucking taken out is the power of discernment or the discerning of spirits, because that's gotten a lot of people into trouble, because people don't believe that a priesthood holder would commit SA, because the bishop put them in this position, shouldn't the bishop have been able to tell that? Also leads to a lot of members losing their faith in the church because they believe that they have this gift and like they're told it in their patriarchal blessing and then something happens to them. They become a victim of a financial crime or essay or something. And they're like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to have this gift. How did I not see this coming? And I know it's especially painful for leaders when they appoint people to positions or give people callings to then find out that the person they gave this calling to, like, Chad Dale is an evil son of a bitch. I don't know how the church can fix all these issues. I think being transparent would probably go a long way and saying like, we know that this was written. We know it's in the scriptures, but this is problematic. And so please ignore them. I don't, I don't know what the church can do. Honestly, I've thought about that. And I think they're kind of in a 
between a rock and a hard place on these issues. And that could be part of the reason why they won't make statements either. At this point, what can they do? Because even though they don't have it on their website, or they no longer teach it, or they say it's personal revelation, or keep your mouth shut if you have these experiences, it's already ingrained in the culture. People already believe it. They already have been taught it. They have absorbed it. And they already have those behaviors. That's just the thing about culture. Anyway, I wanted to give you just an overview of these gifts because they have been talked about in this case, especially in the text messages. And they've been made like these special things that Chad made up. But no, he didn't make, I mean, he made some. He made a lot of shit up and he made some of them up. But the original concept is a Mormon teaching. Anyway, thanks for visiting me today. And remember who you are and what you stand for. Mm-hmm.